Well, about 98% of employers say they Google their prospective employees or even their interns. That means that what you put online matters. Yeah, and that, that's something to think about as kids head off to college. Hannah live at RIT this morning to talk about the importance of branding yourself, even if you're just a freshman in college. Yeah, it's never too early to be careful, to be aware of what you post, guys, because whether you're a freshman or you're a senior, four years comes fast, and you're going to be in the job, you know, in the job hunt faster than you think, right, Mike? Oh, absolutely. You know, most colleges now require students to do a co-op or an internship, and that'll come around junior or senior year. And guess what? When you apply for that, uh, your future employer is going to be Googling you, and what, what they find uh, will affect their opinion of you. Yeah, uh, you speak to a lot of not only students, but their parents as well. You have a blog uh, where you talk a lot about branding yourself and how you can almost change things online if you're Googling yourself to help yourself look better. Maybe if mm. you did something in the past that you're not so proud of, maybe it pops up on Google, you can almost change the landscape of how you look. Talk about the steps first, because you got some cool terms that you use for some of this stuff. Sure. So uh, the phrase I like to use, uh, particularly with students, is Google. You are what Google says you are. Yeah. So, um, you know, whether you like it or not, we are on planet Google, and that's, you know, and other search engines, of course. But when people search, that's how they judge who you are. And so uh, it can be important to think about just how you look to others. Um, and there are lots of tools out there that you can use to help. Uh, obviously, the first thing is get rid of any bad content that you actually control. Got, got silly stuff on your Facebook? Get yeah. rid of it. Uh, got friends who have tagged you in things that are inappropriate? Untag yourself. I mean, that's yes. the pretty basic stuff. Yeah. But and then the search results, too, you know, and you, you, it's a bit more complicated then. Yeah. yeah, and I remember, I always remember, you know, I was that kid because every kid thinks, Oh, I'm, I'm invincible. No one's going to care what my Twitter looks like. Nobody's going to care what my Instagram looks like. And I was that kid in college. You know, you think, oh, come on, Dad, stop telling me, you know, what to do. And you do think that for a while. But then when the time rolls around where you're like, oh, wow, I actually, you know, I am applying for a job and I want them to, I want them to see the best side of me, um, that's important. Uh, so the next step, you goal is, is very important. But then you say a better you branding yourself so if you google yourself and something comes up that you aren't that proud of maybe it's really high on the list mm -hmm. how can you change that well there's all kinds of tools out there you know the rolls royce is reputation.com that gets very expensive very quickly <laughs> and they will help you manage your online reputation but a tool i like to recommend is brandyourself.com uh put together by a few students at syracuse university about three years ago um uh, by a guy called pete kistler Pete graduated from Syracuse and wondered why he wasn't getting any response to application, job <laughs> applications. Uh -oh. And it turned out there was another Pete Kistler, a mass murderer in Texas. <gasps> no. So he figured there's got to be a software application uh, solution to this. How can I separate myself from that Pete Kistler? And Brand Yourself was the solution. And it's a pretty neat tool. It, it has a free version which allows you to... Uh, manage up to four of your links and move up the good ones and move down the bad ones. Wow. But I like to recommend to students, if you're in the process of looking for a co-op or a job, you probably want to pay the, I think it's about $11 a month, uh, so you can manage all your links. <gasps> yeah, we're just don't post things that are bad on the Right, well, yeah, right, common sense. Also that, use common sense. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. post bad stuff in the first place. Yeah, be good. Clean slate for your online uh, future, I guess. When we come back, we're going to continue talking about branding yourself, uh, how to maybe kind of manipulate what Google can see and what other people uh, won't be able to see if you Google yourself. Someone searched your name on Google. Would you be happy with the results? Hannah Welker is learning why this is crucial when it comes to your job search. She's live at RIT this morning with some great advice from an expert. Hey, how are you, Hannah? Hey, I'm good, Norma. Yeah, Mike Johansson and I have been talking all morning about the, the importance of making your online information good and, and clean when it comes to job searching, when it comes to really anything in life. So I wanted to talk to some students to see, you know, how, they, how they're dealing with this as well. Jamie Andrus, you're junior here at RIT. You, you know, you've been around the block a couple a, a couple bit, yeah. years. 
did your parents say anything to you before you came to college about what you post online? Um, no, the, there was never really a presence or um, an importance that my parents imposed so much as it was um, professors here at RIT that understand that, um, that relationship between your personal life and your professional life. Um, especially in my major, um, you know, it's very digitally driven, new media design, um, and there really is a, very, a huge stress on how you exist on the internet, um, you know, your portfolio to even down to employers checking out your Facebook and your LinkedIn and stuff like that. Um, so the, the pressure definitely was sort of an afterthought um, once I got to school. It was never really existent. And, and you know, with my parents at home. Yeah, you are in the perfect major to really know the importance of it. What do you do? What do you, how do you remind yourself? Maybe, you know, on the weekends you do things with friends. Right, yeah. How do you remind yourself to be safe online? Um, I mean, it, it really is. You have to put your filter up um, as far as where your professionalism lies because I think that that, um, you'd want to carry yourself that way regardless of you know, position. I know. I know. There's, you know, there's certain things um, within youth culture that are accepted online. Um, but I just kind of carry myself in such a way that anyone could see, and I wouldn't feel embarrassed. Um, so I know a lot of people do sort of filter things out, especially as an afterthought. That was kind of um, we were encouraged to do that, kind of pull stuff down. You know, after we we realized, you know, what prevalence the internet does have um, on our personal lives. So it's really, I think. If you are concerned with it, you know, I mean, it definitely plays a part of the professional job search. Um, you just kind of have to create a filter for yourself and get comfortable with it. Yeah, I love, so. man, I love that. He's good. Yeah, He's good. So, uh, someone yeah. hire him. <laughs> New media. I love it. Thank you, Jamie. You can go about your day. I was like, we're not stopping you from going to class or anything. And he's like, oh, I'm a junior. But no, he, he isn't going to class. Uh, he was good, right? Excellent. I mean, that is it. In a nutshell, you have to filter yourself from what you wouldn't want other people to see. Right, right. Great representative of, of RIT students there. We can, yeah. we can only hope they're all thinking that. Um, but absolutely, he's right. You know, filter up front, then you don't have to clean up later. I love that. And you, like he said, even if you don't hear it at home, you hope that students are hearing that from their professors here on how to prevent themselves from getting into trouble. Sure, and I think that's pretty pretty prevalent. We are a tech school after all, and I think a lot of professors do emphasize a lot that you have to be so careful about what you post, take down all the bad stuff, and wherever possible, push up the good stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Wow, he was good. I'm so really impressed with his take on that. So important. And new media is is a is a big major, especially uh, through tech kids in in our day and age. So yeah, guys, the importance. We got one more segment here. Uh, I'll be at RIT once again. Yeah. Learning more. Hey, Hannah, thank you so very much. We appreciate yeah. it. Great advice from Mike. He's got always got good stuff to say, and he's right. Those students are. You're right. Those students. The online world is crawling with ways to brand yourself. Branding, branding, we hear so much about it in both good and not so good ways. With us this morning, Hannah Welker learning how to manage your online usage. Great advice for incoming freshmen as, uh, as they begin their college careers. So good and really for anyone really who uses social media. Yeah, really, Norma, a place like this, the student union here at RIT, everyone's on their phones, whether they're, whether they're on Twitter, Instagram, maybe even just online, checking emails. The online world is everywhere, and people are always trying to figure out, how can I make myself look better to maybe future employers, maybe to just keep yourself safe uh, for the future. Mike, you've been giving us tips all morning, and you've been talking about really how visible people are online right it's uh, you know <coughs> you're on whether you like it or not you're you're living online 24 7 365 of the year so you know there's a few things you can do to make sure that image is as positive as it can possibly be yeah. um, number one if at all possible you should own your own name as a URL okay so I know you have hennawelker.com that's good that means that uh, no one else can have that one so that's great um, if you have a name that's a little common, you have to find a variation. But yeah. you know, buy your own URL as a name. It'll cost you 10 to 15 bucks a year to keep it. Um, the next thing is make sure that you have a LinkedIn profile. Now, this is this can be a tough sell for students. 
No, they think LinkedIn is the professional network for people who are working. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality is LinkedIn is the place where you can really start building your online resume portfolio of your work. And you should start as soon as you're a freshman. Um, you know, put down all the interesting classes you've taken that are relevant to your field, uh, any experiences you've had, your co-ops, your internships. Uh, get recommendations from professors. It's never too early to have a good LinkedIn profile. Yeah, and it stays professional. It's not like Facebook, where Facebook can be both kind of for fun and professional. LinkedIn is pretty, pretty clean. Sure, sure. And then the other great thing about LinkedIn is uh, if you optimize it, and LinkedIn tells you how to optimize your profile, uh, that really should be one of the first results that pops up in a Google search about you, and that's a very good thing. Um, and then uh, sort of last but not least, something that you possibly should consider is a blog. Yeah. Um, now, you can blog about anything. If you want to blog about something related to your intended field of work, great. But you don't have to. Just blog about something that's informative and interesting. It sets you apart from everywhere else. It, it's like claiming a piece of digital real estate that you own. It's a really cool thing. Yeah, and that's what we've been looking at all morning. This is your blog, mm -hmm. um, and you said you, you started this, obviously, for the work you do both here and outside. And you said it doesn't have to be boring it doesn't have to be you know super informational and strict it could be about something like you said that you enjoy sure yeah, it should reflect you a little bit i mean uh, i had a student an accounting student once who basically got a job because she did a blog about making milk carton furniture had nothing to do with accounting but it set her apart from all the other applicants yeah well think about all like the mom blogs out there all the blogs of people doing designing or creative stuff you could do any you could create that and a lot of times for free oh, it's yeah. free right there for you yeah and it just takes a little bit of time and effort and you know a blog post 250 to 350 words doesn't have to be long a couple of pictures um do it once a week it'll help you rise up in google search yeah check that out all finding ways to rise up make the good things go up the bad things go down in your google search thank you so much oh, gosh that pleasure great. pleasure <laughs> it's been a fun morning in rat i learned so much now i gotta i gotta go on google and figure out what what pops yeah. up when right? i google my Play, name put it to practice all right hannah thank yeah. you so very much we appreciate it. it's great to talk to mike again after all